The First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America includes the freedom of all people in the country of freedom of speech, stating Congress, Congress shall make no law abridging freedom of speech. This includes the right not to speak, to portray political views, contribute money to political campaigns, advertise products and services, and be critical of the government. As long as you do not speak in a way that incites actions that cause harm, it is protected by freedom of speech. Violations of freedom of speech regularly occur in Syria. This especially includes the imprisonment and murder of journalists. According to CPJ, or Committee to Protect Journalists, 110 journalists have been killed in Syria since 2010. An example is Usama Nazir al-Zabi, a journalist for the rebel-affiliated Syrian media organization, who was killed in a car bombing along with his brother and nephew. He was on his way to report on the effects of a Syrian government bombing campaign and was using his speech to combat the abusive Syrian government. An example of a society lacking freedom of speech is in Libya. There is almost no tolerance for unpopular media and press. Political and criminal violence towards journalists have ma made reporting extremely dangerous. Media outlets resort to censoring themselves to prevent conflict with armed groups sent to destroy them. The government has made internet providers ban access to websites involving Christianity, atheism, and pornography. This restriction and censorship of speech has resulted in most journalists and citizens of Libya avoiding controversial political talk and reporting. This results in a situation where injustices can't be solved as a government that is often causing these injustices cannot be opposed or questioned. The citizens are therefore trapped in an endless cycle of desire for change without any possibilities of advocating for that change. The right to privacy. What is the right to privacy in the workplace? Well, according to the American Civil Liberties Union, many of our basic rights that we take for granted are not protected when we go to work. For employers, it is a legitimate action to monitor their employees to evaluate their efficiency and productivity in the workplace. However, this monitoring can go far beyond business interests. According to findlaw.com, things like email and internet have less protections, whereas physical pre uh, spaces like locked desk drawers have more protection in terms of privacy. Electronic surveillance. Employers can monitor phone calls and voicemails, but there are limitations. These uh, limitations are placed in due to the Electronic Communications Privacy Act, or ECPA, which limits employers' rights to monitor the employee's personal phone calls in the workplace. Now, the right to privacy is not explicitly stated in the U.S. Constitution. However, some amendments do allow for protection. For example, the Fourth Amendment allows for privacy from unreasonable searches. The Fifth protects from privacy of personal information. Now, in a very recent court case, the plaintiffs filed a complaint against the defendants in Alabama for uh, transgender rights in Alabama. The court case called Corbett v. Taylor had the, def uh, the plaintiffs, Darcy Corbett, Destiny Clark, and John Doe, suing the defendants on grounds that the defendants are responsible for a policy that prevents transgender people in Alabama from receiving a license that reflects their gender, unless a medical procedure is performed and proof of that procedure is disclosed with a physician's approval of the procedure to the government. Due to this policy, many transgender Alabamians cannot receive a license without giving highly sensitive information which poses the threat of attack and discrimination. This policy is known as Policy Order 63, which, requir which requires ap applicants to submit birth a birth certificate and a letter from the physician confirming the procedure has taken place. Not only does this pr uh, deprive transgender people in Alabama of a basic right, it also demeans them. Policy Order 63 also does not take into account that not all transgender people might want to receive a medical procedure or that they might not be able to afford said procedure. This creates a hostile environment and does not accept all people for their sexuality. Freedom of assembly. What is the freedom of assembly? 
Well, Article 11 of the Constitution states that all people have the right to peacefully assemble and freely associate with others, including the right to join trade unions. No restrictions are allowed to be placed on this freedom unless it is to prevent unless it is for the prevention of crime or for the protection of the health of the community. An example of this is the country of North Korea, which is a country without social freedoms at all. North Korea is a communist country which allows its citizens extremely low amounts of freedoms. It does not allow any public gatherings except those praising the government. Any public displays of protest in the slightest form result in charges of treason against the fatherland, which entails death or a long sentence in North Korea, often a death sentence in itself. Public assembly and protests are only rare because of the harsh penalties, but because of the strict denial of outside media and entertainment isolating North Koreans from the realities of life outside their country, this lack of information and inability to, pr to have protest and assemblies leave North Korean citizens without any hope for change to their uh, abusive and unjust government. Another example of this is the shooting of a young African-American man in Ferguson. On August 9, 2014, police shot and killed an unarmed 18-year-old African-American named Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. Protests soon followed, but were met with strong police opposition. Use of tear gas, rubber bullets, and armored vehicles infringed upon the peaceful protesters' right to freedom of assembly. This action hindered the public's right to conduct a largely peaceful protest. Some gatherings were planned while others were spontaneous. However, despite the largely peaceful majority, due to the minor looting, tensions escalated between police and protesters. In a video, an officer is heard yelling abusive and demeaning language of the protesters. Alba Morale states, Ferguson police are compounding the problem. With threats and use of unnecessary force against peacefully protesting the police killing of Michael Brown. Without the freedom of assembly, the protesters were not allowed to speak their minds on a matter they felt very strongly about. The category of police brutality is a very disputed topic, and I believe that the protest was very necessary in itself. The right to fair trial and due process involves how everybody deserves a trial that is fair to them, such as having unbiased lawyers, judges, and juries. Without this right, one can be imprisoned for no reason due to a lack of a trial or can be imprisoned unfairly due to an unfair, biased trial. Fairtrials.org describes it as a key role of any government to maintain law and order on behalf of the whole society. And Cornell U University says that bias or prejudice, either inherent in the structure of the trial system or as imposed by external events, will deny one's right to a fair trial. Although we are very lucky to have the right to a fair trial and due process in the United States of America, many countries in the world are not. Examples such as these are very evident in African countries, according to justicehub.org, but there are also examples of such outside of Africa. This is very evident in China. China is home to many egregious violations of basic human rights. One of their most glaring violations of such rights is the lack of a fair trial and due process for prisoners and those accused of crimes. A very prominent trial in China, called the Xinjiang, Ch Xinjiang Trial, is a glaring example of such failures in human rights. This trial over a violent ethnic protest was deemed to have been in violation of multiple human rights by human rights watches, after it was discovered that the trial was more or less a kangaroo court. This was according to HumanRightsWatch.org. From the websites China Aid and Quartz Media, the Communist Chinese government has also frequently made up false charges against Christian missionaries and other activists, imprisoning them for arbitrary reasons after unfair trials. Two recent examples of this are the imprisonment of a man in 2016 for organizing a <laughs> memorial for the victims of the Tiananmen Square massacre and sentenced to four years imprisonment under false charges of picking quarrels and provoking trouble, and the imprisonment of an American pastor working with impoverished children from Myanmar by frequently crossing the Chinese border to visit. The aforementioned border has little regulation, and the two governments typically do not care about border crossing, and the pastor always passed through without any trouble. Sadly, the Chinese government has recently accused the pastor with organizing illegal border crossing, 
tests, which he did not do. It is unlikely that he will win this case as China is notorious for having extremely unfair trials against Christians and other activists, not unlike the trial of human rights lawyer Wu Gan. Wu was a prominent campaigner for human rights in China and was suddenly arrested and sentenced to seven years in prison under trumped-up charges of subversion. The freedom of religion, while not technically a necessity of life like the rights to shelter or clean water, is a social freedom of belief. In terms of an exact dictionary definition from the New Dictionary of Cultural Literacy, religious freedom would be the ability to believe in whatever one wants, or not believe, without government involvement. Here in America, religious freedom is highly valued and given to its citizens. In fact, the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution states that everyone in the U.S. has the right to practice his or her own religion, or no religion at all as restated by the America Civil Liberties Union. In addition, the Establishment Clause in the First Amendment forbids the government from establishing an official religion and also prohibits government actions that unduly favor one religion over another, according to the Cornell University Law School as well. However, religious freedom is at stake for many people around the world, such as the case for Christians in Egypt, where they are persecuted for their faith. Although Christianity was once the majority faith in Egypt, the voice of the martyrs' organization reported that Islam eventually rose in the area and with it, the usage of Islamic law for legislation. Nowadays, roughly 90% of the country's citizens are Islamic, while the majority of Christians are Coptic Christians. For many Christians in Egypt, examples of religious persecution include societal pressure to convert to Islam and local governments hindering the ability of Christians to worship together. Moreover, Christians are also reported in Open Doors USA as being denied high-level government and security services jobs. Sadly, other types of persecution have been more violent, which has not been helped by the increase of radical Islamic groups like ISIS. Two prominent examples of ISIS persecution would be the suicide bombings on St. Mark Cathedral in Cairo in 2016 and the April suicide bombings in 2017 on Palm Sunday, which were reported to have killed a combined 70 people and injured 174 others by Human Rights Watch. Ultimately, Christian persecution in Egypt prevents those Christians from worshipping and expressing their beliefs. In short, it denies human dignity. By restricting the ability to express one's belief, Christians in the society of Egypt are restricted in their happiness, forced to live in fear of violence and unfair social and economic discrimination. In order to escape, Christians must take on a societal identity. Otherwise, these same Egyptian citizens are not seen as worthy of respect, or hope in the divine, or in feeling. There are simply others, objects that are lesser than, despite the fact that both Islam and Christian believers are citizens of Egypt and a loved creation of God. This directly violates the Catholic social teaching principles as well, such as the rights and responsibilities section, which states that if a person has a right, then there is a subsequent responsibility of society to protect this right that the person and society has. In this case, a majority of citizens have the right to believe in what they want, Islam, but do not protect the right of religious freedom for other people. Without this social liberty in a society, the majority holds an imbalance of power over the minority, and injustice thrives. According to Fine Law, Shestokas.com, and the New Zealand Institute, freedom of petition is a right of the people to change what they view as a flaw in their government. It is an important part of our Constitution due to it being instrumental in our Founding Fathers' struggle for freedom against the tyrannical British Empire. In China, for example, the government in recent years has frequently cracked down on pro-democracy activists in Hong Kong. On the 1st of July in 1997, Britain finally relinquished Hong Kong as one of their overseas colonies. As part of the agreement between China and Britain, China agreed to rule with a one-country, two-systems governance, meaning Hong Kong had more freedom than mainland China. Today, China completely violates the former government with the British Empire. As said by the Washington Post and U.S. News, China continuously cracks down on pro-democracy protesters and activists by using violent counter-tactics. Originally, China agreed to let Hong Kong mostly rule themselves, but now they have completely reversed their decision and gone as far to use violence and intimidation on, on people who live in Hong Kong who wish for democracy. In one of the biggest pro-democracy movements in 2014 called the Umbrella Movement, Chinese police beat and arrested demonstrators in massive numbers. This still continues to this day whenever there is so much of a semblance of a pro-democracy movement.